Hey everyone, Adam here. Um, I hope I hope you're well and safe, and I hope quarantine life is staying you well. Um, so yeah, welcome to my orgasm video. And you've guessed it, it's all about orgasms. Like we're gonna talk about cis female orgasms, we're gonna talk about male, male cis orgasms, and we're gonna talk about trans orgasms. Yes. So, um, <laughs> so, yeah, I forgot what I was going to say here. The reason I'm going to talk about orgasms here today is because, well, it's an overdue subject, but mostly it's to answer a couple of questions that I got on my channel. And um, actually, those, those questions got me really thinking because I realized I've never had this kind of conversation before, you know, about my own personal orgasms or talking about just generally about orgasms with trans people. I never thought to go and ask another trans person if they are going through the same or you know or they're going through, through something different and maybe if we share maybe we'll, we'll know something we didn't know before and thank you to the person who asked the questions because they are important to discuss and answer i understand why as as a trans community we don't talk about these things very often and it's because it's it's your private parts you deserve to have it you know private and it's not like you know you you, you meet each other, you're like, hey, how's your orgasm going? You know, it's just like ridiculous. <laughs> Especially that the majority of trans people get asked about their genitals like 90% of the time from cis people. So it kind of make puts us off talking about the whole subject. It's just anything that's related to genitals and, you know, makes us want to talk about, I don't know, cats and other things when we meet, when we meet up. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think it is important to be talking about certain things so at least the, the younger generations can you know can grow up and know what to expect because right now it kind of it's all doom and gloom you know you don't know are you getting orgasm are you gonna die when you have surgery um you know is, is your is your genitals look can look normal you know it's just so many questions out there and the lack of answer it's kind of put the trans community in danger really because they're not able to go ahead and just be themselves there's so many stressors and so many things on their mind that they're not sure of none of us know anything before we start so i'm gonna uh, start with the second question guys just because it's a little bit more straightforward than the first question This is not coming from a personal experience. This is coming from research. In fact, a lot of studies, numerous studies have been done on cis, uh, female cis orgasms, male cis orgasms, just cis bodies in general. And yeah, there are loads. Literally, if you guys Google, you're going to have so many studies um, coming up. I will leave a link in the description for everything I share. So yeah, for so let's crack on with this article I've got here. Females have longer orgasms lasting 20 plus seconds compared to 3 plus seconds. Males have more orgasms than females. Gay women reportedly orgasm 12% more of the time than straight women. Gay women reportedly have longer sexual intercourse than straight women. Genetics play a huge role in a woman's ability to orgasm during sex. Brain activity between men and women is the same during an orgasm. Both genders find themselves sleepier after an intense orgasm. Both males and females are capable of orgasms during their sleep. Males are capable of non ejaculation Here is another article from the Medical News Today. And it also says that female orgasm typically lasts longer than male, an average of around 13 to 51 seconds. Yeah, I told you, it's going to be more straightforward. If you're asking me to tell you from my, from a personal experience, then this is where we can go in the wrong, man. Okay, let me explain. A lot of folk think that, you know, trans people live both lives at some point or another, you know, just because we're born into one and then we transition into another, you know, so we cannot live both worlds, which is true to some extent. We never experience both bodies organically. Me, for example, even though I was born in a female body, I really have no idea what a female orgasm is. I never felt or treated my body the same way a cis female would. But wait, I don't actually know what a male orgasm is either. Do you? I don't, I'm not really, I don't know why I asked you, but I don't know what a cis male orgasm is either. My penis and testes are simply man-made. 
cut and chopped and you know a lot of things happened and although i'm very very happy with them it does not make them biological so really i have no idea what cis dude feels when when he orgasms like yeah hang on so if you've never had female orgasm and if you've never had any male orgasm what the hell then what kind of orgasms are you having trans orgasm did you make this up maybe anyway that doesn't really matter doesn't matter if i've made it up or not right as long as it makes sense ow <laughs> yeah you made this up wait where is the other one so let's start with the definition that I just made up, so here we go. Trans orgasms are orgasms experienced by transgender individuals, including non-binary folk, regardless of the body they are experiencing to have said orgasm. Trans orgasms is not just one kind, it is as unique as the person having them. And this brings me, guys, back to the first question very nicely. Further explanation from the author of the questions were posted and um, they said that what they mean by post-op and pre-op is just the hormone changes. So pre-op means pre-hormone therapy, post-op means after hormone therapy. But the fact is I'm going to talk about all stages. Stage number one would be orgasms using the body I was born with unaltered by hormone therapy or any surgeries. This is the stage where I'm a little bit sketchy on. My dysphoria was so severe, I, could, I couldn't, ha you know, handle using this body in anything at all. I really, like, you know, if I could not touch my own body, I would have. Except that I was inside it, so it was hard. But literally, if I could jump out of my body at that time and not be in it, I, you know, and be just naked, like, so naked, I would, I would go for it. So this stage, I sadly never had any sex or, or experienced orgasms because I just hated my body, you know. So I personally don't know a lot about this stage, but I want to, I want to explain something. Other trans people might have explored this stage very well and explored their bodies be well before hormone or any surgical treatment. But that's not to say that a trans man using their body before hormone therapy will experience orgasm the same way a female, a cis female uh, person would. And this is, this is really huge because we think, oh, right, okay, so this is a vagina, this is a clitoris, you know, if it's stimulated, you know, same, roughly the same way, then, you know, voila, both orgasms are going to be identical. And that's really not true. It's not even true for cis women. Cis women are also different. They experience orgasms and intensities very, very differently. And the... the being a trans man and having a, a different perspective of the world and a different and having a different experience of our body, totally different from cis women, will make us experience orgasms a little bit different. All right, let's talk about second stage orgasms experienced with the body you are born with, altered by hormone therapy alone, aka TPS. Here is a quick definition for those who don't know what a T-penis is. T-penis is a term coined by the transgender community to describe the enlargement of the clitoris as a result of testosterone treatment. T-penis varies in size, typically between 1 inch and up to 3 inches or more, depending on each individual. We all know that testosterone increases your sex drive tremendously, like I mean, really. So, <laughs> so remember I told you I was very dysphoric about using any of my body, where did you go? Two years into hormone therapy with a raging sex drive, like I decided to experiment with this little, little, little um, new fellow, deep penis. And the findings were spectacular. They really were. Like, for example, guys, I realized that the mechanics of this T penis were so similar to the mechanics of biological penises. Like, what? For example, you wouldn't jerk it off the same way you would do a clitoris. Like, you would do it as a biological penis. You know, like, you know, this is your T penis, right? And you would go like up and down, you know, you don't, you wouldn't, I don't know, you wouldn't stimulate it the same way you would stimulate the clitoris. Allow me to blow your mind away. 
Did you know that all male bodies started off with a clitoris? Geneticists have discovered that all human embryos start life as females, as do all embryos of mammals. About the second month, the fetal tests elaborate enough androgens to offset the maternal estrogens and maleness develops. I will put a link down in the description below. Um, it's actually pretty interesting. It also talks a little bit about orgasm. what it says on the tin you know i mean it's exactly what i said when i'm not turned on it had like you know normal size okay and then when i got turned on it kind of like and it sometimes will go two to three times its normal size another spectacular observation i can only orgasm once per session what i mean by that is that i I never experienced multiple orgasms. I don't really know what that is. I mean, I know it's multiple orgasms, but I don't know what that feels like because I've never had it before. You know, once I come, I can't just like continue. No, um, like biological males, I have to start all over again. You know, I have to warm up again till I get myself hot and bothered and you know, get my T penis up and running and all of this and you know, I can have sex again and now I can come again. But I cannot come twice in the same session. Do you know what I mean? Now, moment of truth. What was my orgasm like? I bet you want to know, right? Let me just clarify. My orgasms on testosterone before surgical treatments was... I mean, yeah, it was intense. I think, were they long? No. No. Like... A few seconds, three, four, I mean, God, I don't know, I wasn't putting a timer on it, but I don't, don't think it was like a long, you know, endless, I, I remember them being quite sure, it's like, uh, you know, that was like, <laughs> so yeah, how many seconds or not? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> now, okay. Did I enjoy Sinogasm? You're gonna be disappointed. No, not really. I mean, it was nice and having that many penis was great. It was the closest thing that I have had to a real penis. And also having a T-penis allowed me to be intimate with someone, which was amazing. It was the first time I ever be intimate with someone. It's a feeling I craved so much. The reason why I didn't enjoy having sex with the T-penis and orgasm and having orgasms is because it, my T-penis quickly became a dysphoria trigger. Whenever I look down or, you know, I just catch a glimpse of something, I'm completely out of everything. I lose my sex drive. Um, I'm just not able. It's just another reminder of the body that I hate. You know what I mean? So I guess having a mini penis was nice at the start because it was different, but then it quickly grew to be a reminder of my dysphoria. So I didn't like those um, orgasms very much. But you know, guys, I just really want to remind you, remind you of something that I think is super important. You've now heard my experience of not having orgasms before hormone therapy or surgeries. You've also heard me talk about my TPNS orgasms and how much I didn't quite like them. I would like to remind you that this is not the experience of every trans person that have gone through this. In fact, there are so many trans men out there that love their TPNS, they love their T orgasms, excuse me, and you know, don't mind having the TPNS uh, at all. Like this is this is what they choose to go on with for their, for their entire life. So we have to respect all these choices. Now, stage three, orgasms with the body, altered with hormone therapy and surgical treatment. And this is where I am right now, people. Hello, a lot has changed. I mean, for starters, I've been operated on down there three times. Some nerves been plucked out from, from here and from my T-penis and all connected down to my new big penis. Some nerves have came back to life and they, they 
um, make me feel amazing orgasms. Some nerves are still in limbo. They haven't decided whether they want to die or come back to life yet. And some nerves definitely died now. My orgasms are definitely intense. Oh yeah, definitely intense. Like I'm enjoying my orgasms. Is it long? Oh God, I don't know. I didn't know how long was the first one. How would I know? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. We've already agreed that the first one was like uh, that. Yeah, I would definitely say longer, longer than before. My orgasms on the T-penis, with the T-penis, um, I think they used to be localized. Like whenever I orgasmed, I just felt the orgasm like around the T-penis, but nowhere else really, um, nowhere around the body. However, now it's a little bit different. Sometimes when I orgasm, I experience something weird and magnificent it really is magnificent it's like my entire body is coming all together with me and I get my toes and I get my like my hands and it's like oh, oh lovely 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 enjoying the experience of having sex so much better now than before so no wonder that my feelings are much better even after losing some of my sensations um, as opposed to as the T penis. I mean, <clears throat> this is something that no one really talks about, and I think I guess I'm talking about it now. Uh, everyone talks about the orgasm, right? Orgasm is like amazing. Yes, it is amazing, but you know, not everything is about orgasms. Let me give you this. Uh, I, I, hang on. <clears throat> so we have this sanitizer bottle. Here we go. And okay, so. When we had the tea penis, you know, it was it was biological. The tea penis grew naturally and it was entirely biological. All the nerves were working, everything was working fine because it was, you know, something your body made. So that the feelings when you go in and out, like you know, when you penetrate, here is your T penis and you penetrate, you know, the feeling of going in and out was amazing. I'll give you that because all my nerves, all my sensations were there. So I was feeling, you know, the feeling of going in and out very intensely, you know? Well now, okay, so here is my, ouch. Here is my big penis. This is my fellow, my bio, not my biological. This is my, uh, ah, this is my penis right now, okay? <clears throat> so remember guys, I told you that there are some nerves that I've came back to life and there are some nerves that are in limbo, still having came back to life or died, and there are some nerves that have died. Okay, and let's say I've got some nerves here that came back to life and a little bit here, maybe this area, like a circle here, and maybe a circle here, and maybe a dot here, 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 and then a circle here, a dot here, a dot here, a dot here. You know, it's just totally random. It's not like, oh, one side feels everything and one side doesn't feel everything. No, it is dotted all over. So we know, let's say this is, how I said, that's the penis, right? And you hold it. I mean, of course, you're going to feel in and out because, you know, you've got nerves alive dotted all around, but you won't feel every inch of your penis going in and out. Ah. Oh. It's so hard to explain. It's so hard. So, uh, it's so hard to explain. You are going to feel things and I really don't want to put you off because I do feel things and I do orgasm. But the point here is, is because nerves are not alive all over yet. The, the intense feeling of, the feeling of get in, going in and out was definitely more intense with the T-penis than it is with my phalloplasty penis. However, that is gonna change. As I, as I told you, things are constantly changing as nerves come back to life. So, uh, but just to say that, you know, orgasm aren't really everything. It's the experience itself, I think, that makes the orgasm intense or not. If I enjoyed, uh, like even though my, my penis doesn't have the same intense feeling as my T penis, I enjoy sex so much better now. Like I love sex now and I love orgasms and I love my body and I'm like, yes, this is an experience that I'm totally in, you know, heart and mind and soul. I'm loving it and I'm, I'm totally in it. Wow. Well, so my orgasms as a result, so much better than before, even though biologically I was fitter, fitter than I am. Now, does that make any sense? It's all about your shit. No, 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 no. 
See, this, this, this video was a little bit difficult for me. Um, I think mostly because of the terminology and the wordings that were used in the questions, because they completely eradicated trans bodies and trans experience. And I'm not blaming the author of the questions. Definitely, you know, I'm actually very thankful that these questions came my way. What I want to say is thank you for your question. I really do appreciate it. But it's it's I would what I would like for people to have in their minds. It's, it's very important that we become aware of 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 our speech and our wordings or our terminology so we can include the trans community better in our lives asking questions about cis orgasms and about cis experiences um, to a trans person is not quite appropriate um, because we are trans we have trans bodies and we have trans orgasms and we have trans feelings and we have trans perspective of the world and trans experience and i know you think i'm being over and i'm being crazy but it's really true trans people are between two worlds they they they're born into one life so they are socialized like for example me i was socialized as a woman i know kind of life of women somehow i don't feel it but i knew it just because i experienced it and i lived amongst women and i spoke with women and i knew like personal experiences so i've got like a unique insight that a cis dude wouldn't never have uh, and at the same time i am a man i've got the mind of a man the soul of a man and i'm living currently as a man so i'm also experiencing you know i know the life of a man so i've got a unique vision here and that's what most trans people have they have got a unique vision of both lives while being in the middle or perhaps just outside the two circles altogether outside the two binaries altogether we're just trans um, and our bodies obviously just because we we change them to match our personalities and we use hormones and we use surgeries and we use clothing and we use tattoos and we use lifestyles um, to you know to, to, to try to feel as um, to try to see what we feel um, and that and you know that makes us that makes our bodies trans and that makes our feelings trans and that makes our brains trans and makes our experience of the world trans and certainly certainly most certainly makes our orgasms trans I'm trying to tell you orgasm is less physical and it's a lot more mental than you think it is I hope this I hope this video was well I know it was confusing but I hope you got a laugh I hope you got some perspective of some things and I hope you've learned something new and if you've got any new questions please post them in the comments and I shall try my best to answer them um, but yeah stay safe and stay well see you later guys <laughs>